the first federal program on WROI Cheyenne FM and streaming live on the first federal Facebook page. It is a Friday morning, chilly start for a Friday morning, but it is a Friday morning nonetheless, and it is time for the first federal program here on Giant FM. Tanner, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Chilly start is an understatement. It yes, is just we have cold. both broke out our sock caps, yeah. so that's when you know it's cold out. Yep, I told you when the wind chill gets around zero, it's time for the sock cap to come out, so and the gloves. Yeah, and uh, it is definitely that cold out there. Yes. We're uh, thir- uh, three degrees and negative 15 with that wind chill. You know, I thought it was interesting. I think it was on your personal Facebook yesterday. I don't think it was on WROI that you said, you asked anybody if they liked the cold. Yeah. yeah. A few people responded they liked the cold weather. I know. Uh, I got a buddy who lives over in uh, England, and he's like, oh, it's a chilly, like, eight degrees Celsius. And I'm like, no, not doing that. No, that's, uh... I'll, I'll stick with our uh, metrics stuff here you know if it if it could just be in the 70s all year round i'd be really happy 75 was my yeah. my go-to answer yesterday so yeah <laughs> but unfortunately it's not that's part of living in the midwest is, is the is getting by in the winter so i know people keep telling me i need to stop complaining about it and just move somewhere else I'm like, no i like where i live it's just too cold for me yeah well the good news is it should the temperature should go up a little bit this weekend looks like we're getting in the 30s Yes. That will um, feel like a heat wave compared to what it's been the last couple of days. So. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, but yeah, one, one thing I was thinking about this morning, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about animals a lot on our show today, mm-hmm. and when it gets cold, make, make sure your animals can come inside for a little bit if, you, yeah. if they're able to. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially when we're getting down in the when the wind chills around zero, it's pretty dangerous for them. So. Absolutely. Now, you guys always ask me trivia questions. Uh-huh. So, I've got a question for you two, okay. as Todd Vansicle is standing here joining us for sports. Good morning. Um, what is the worst thing you guys have ever stepped on barefoot? I mean, the, the go-to answer, of course, is Legos. That, not that, see, that, that, that's the first thing that came to my mind. That was going to be my answer. Um, oh, well, sorry, Todd. <laughs> I think, besides the Lego, I mean, dog toys, can those count? Yeah. I've stepped yeah. on a couple dog toys. They can hurt, um, especially those raw high bones. I've been lucky enough so far not to step on a nail or anything. Oh, yeah, that would hurt if you stepped on that. I might go the, the dog route, that yeah. route too, but it's not a toy that you stepped just, in there, but yeah. Just the dog itself? <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. no. Um, oh, I got you. Yeah. I got I got what you're It's kind of like if you come out after they chew on yes. the toy. Yeah, you're so. standing in like kind of a muddy river, you know? Like yeah, that. Sometimes you feel unusual things underneath. That's a good, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one, too. So, how about yourself? Um, yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm going to agree with Todd. That doesn't feel good when you step on that and it goes between your toes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's why I have stopped taking my socks off. <laughs> we have Janet Shally, our guest here. Do you yeah. want to ask her the question? Yeah. She just came in here. You yeah. don't know the question. Yeah. So. I didn't hear the question. Answer the question. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst thing you've ever stepped on barefoot? I have stepped on glass. Yeah. Ooh. That's, yeah. I might take the cake this morning. Yeah, Janet yeah. wins. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little cut. It didn't need stitches or anything. That's good. But yeah. it hurt, for sure. The Legos is definitely what first came to my mind. Just, yeah. Yeah, that feels good. So, But I got a trivia question for you to think about during this whole show. All right, and let's do it. It's animal related. Uh-huh. According to dailypulse.com, what is the most popular cat breed in, in the world? This isn't fair. I don't know my cat breeds. Yeah, see, that's why I'm throwing you a hard one <laughs> to begin 2022. Is it Persian, American short hair, British short hair, or ragdoll? I give you four choices. So. Yeah, and I don't even know what any of those are. I know what a Mancun is. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll give you credit for knowing what it is, but it's not it's my favorite breed of cat. It's not, not in the options. So I'll let you think about it throughout the show, and you can answer later. All right. So, uh, quick sports update. Um, got some local sports here. Uh, Lady Zebras got a big win over Plymouth on Wednesday night. Yes. They now play at Wicko tomorrow night, so back in conference play. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Afternoon. I should I should have said tomorrow. I don't yeah. know why. I just <laughs> assumed it. it was tomorrow night. Have yeah, it. have it. Uh, the boys play tonight. They host Wicko, and tomorrow they host Oregon Davis. Yes. So double header, both at home. Yeah. Yeah. 
Some other local uh, lady sports. North Miami, I saw, was victorious last night over Argus in a really close one. And Northfield defeated Tippecanoe Valley. Okay. And Culver and Casson were supposed to play, but that game was canceled. Right, right. So, we just found out about that this morning. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, but the other the other schools, the boys are in action too tonight and over the weekend. I do not have who they play right uh, now. Yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, winter sports we're we're in the thick of things now. We're in yes, January, we so it's definitely conference season for all those sports and wrestling. For example, they already know who they're gonna they drew in the sectional. Yeah, so, and the girls' sectional draw is coming up. Uh, I think the twenty third. Yeah, we're getting to that time. It's hard to believe. It feels like it just started. Yes, twenty third is correct. <laughs> Uh, local college basketball, we've had a lot of teams in action this week. Thankfully, they're all back in action. Some of them had a break um, due to COVID, so they're all back in action. Uh, Indiana was victorious last night over Ohio State, number 13 Ohio State, so a good win for Indiana. Yeah. They now host uh, Minnesota, who has a 10-2 record. That game will be on Sunday at noon on the Big Ten Network. Uh, Purdue is looking to bounce back from a home loss on Monday. Um, that wasn't fun for me to watch, at least. Uh, they lost to Wisconsin on Monday at home. They're looking to bounce back tomorrow at Penn State, who was just victorious against Indiana and Northwestern, so they're on a two-game win streak. That game's also at noon tomorrow, Tomorrow though, on the Big Ten Network. So. Okay. Uh, Butler plays tonight. They host Xavier, who's 11-2. That game's at 8.30 on the CBS Sports Network. And Notre Dame coming off a big win over North Carolina earlier this week. They're on the road at Georgia Tech tomorrow night at 6 o'clock on the ACC network. So yeah. a lot of different networks these teams of, are on. Uh, so Go buy five TVs and then you can watch everything. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> NFL, we're in the last week of the regular season. We big are. game for the Colts coming up. They lost to the Raiders last week. They head down to Jacksonville to play the worst team in the league record-wise, the 2-14 and 14 Jaguars. But the Colts haven't won in Jacksonville since 2014. Let's go, Jacks. Oh, I mean, uh, go Colts. <laughs> so, the game's at Sunday, 1 o'clock on CBS, but you can also listen to the pregame and the game itself and the postgame right here. Yep, starting at noon. Yep. And then Colts win, they're in. They lose, they're going to have to have some help. Yeah. Game. Yeah. And I think a lot of Colts fans will agree, if they lose to the Jaguars, they don't agree to make the playoffs. Exactly. And the Bears, uh, no playoff implications here, but they traveled to Minnesota to play the seven and nine Vikings. That game's Sunday at one o'clock on Fox. Okay. So, and my Denver Broncos, no playoff implications for them. Their game got flexed till tomorrow, oh, four thirty. Wow. Good thing about that is that means their season ends before anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I mean, um, the Browns are done regardless yeah. of if they play, so yep. it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The Browns uh, might pop up in my tidbits today. Oh no. So speaking mm-hmm. of those. On this day, 1927, the Harlem Globetrotters played their first game that took place in Hickley, Illinois. Wow. Ever been and seen the Globetrotters? No. No. TV's not as close as I've come to seeing them. Pretty entertaining if you ever get a chance. I went when I was younger up in South Bend. I'd like to see the 90s version again. Yeah. Not the new one. A little different now, but still still entertaining if you get a chance to go. I I would uh, recommend it. On this day, 1929, Tarzan first appeared in the comic strip. Oh, okay. Also, uh, talking about comic strips, on this day in 1934, Flash Gordon debuted in a comic strip. Hey, good old Flash. On this day in 1963, the Cleveland Browns fired Paul Brown. Mm. We'll uh, we'll dive more into what my dad thinks about that here in the trivia. Uh, I was going to (laughs) say, yeah, there was some conflict with Paul Brown, the owner, and finally they just said, we're cutting ties with you. And then he went to coach the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. For a little bit. At least he stayed in all that. That's true. On this day, 1992, AT&T released a video telephone. Can you tell me what the starting retail price on that was? Um, what year? 92. I'm going to go $500. Got to go up a little bit. Oh, okay. It's almost $1,500. It was wow. 1,440, $1,499 was the wow. starting retail price on the video telephone. Wow. And on this day in 2019, Amazon overtook Microsoft to become the world's most valuable listed company for the first time. Mm-hmm. At that time, the company was worth $797 billion. Wow. It's only gone up since then. Yeah, now. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, we got a few national days today. Today's National uh, Tempura Day, National Bobblehead Day. You got any bobbleheads? I do, actually. Yep, yeah, me too. Harlem Globetrotter Day. 
I'm not going to take it anymore day. Yeah, it's not after the Twisted Sister song or anything like that. Uh. And it's Old Rock Day, which is what it sounds like. It's for old rocks. Okay, rocks. Rocks, rock yeah. Roll. No, so. not rock and roll, not Dwayne The Rock Johnson, nothing like that. Well, I hope it's not. I wouldn't consider him old no, yet. No, he is in his 40s, but... Uh, well... He'll never look old. No, he no. doesn't age, and, and no. he just... All he keeps, did was shave his head, that was it. Just keeps making more money, and uh, I think he's number two top-paid actor in the world right now. Well, I know he got paid twenty million, him and Ryan Reynolds each, for that Netflix yeah, movie for, that came know, out. Uh, his IMB started with one, and now it's over a hundred. I swear. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he can get pretty much any role. Just don't ask him to play in the next Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah, he's, he's not doing that. <laughs> got some money news this morning. Like you just mentioned before we came on air here, the Dow Jones uh, was down last night. It closed yeah. down one hundred seventy point sixty four points. It closed at 36,236.47. Hopefully we get it to go back up today. We'll see. It's kind of been up and down the Work your magic. last couple of weeks. I don't have any magic to work. <laughs> um, did you see the news about BlackBerry this week? I did not. Well, it's uh, rest in peace BlackBerry is pretty much the headline. Uh, the oh, software okay. for BlackBerry devices no longer supported as of January 4th. Oh. Well, so, I don't have any BlackBerry devices. I anymore, don't know so. of anybody that. I had one in high school. I had one in high yeah, school as well. Cool. I loved it. I did. I liked <laughs> mine too. Except I got mine off eBay. And I remember about after four months, the keyboard kind of just fell apart. Mm -hmm. So I don't think yeah. I got a. Not that high school. No. No. I do miss the you know slide out full keyboard thing. Yeah. That was the best oh. thing for BlackBerry. Well, some smart flip phones are coming back now. Yeah, I know. About the only one I'm interested in is the Razer, so. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, rest in peace to Black Grass. I think I saw the last celebrity was to kind of famously use it was Kim Kardashian West. Hmm. So, that was okay. as of like 2016, though. She finally said well, she had yeah. to switch. So. Uh, all about First Federal today. We are open today from 8.30 to 5 and tomorrow from 8.30 to noon. You can, of course, always bank with us online and with our mobile app, which is free to download. Type in First Federal Savings Bank, look for the white star with the green background. So whether you have an Apple device or Android device, it's free on either. Yes, it is. Uh, ATMs also open 24-7 as well if you need some cash. If you're outside the Rochester area and not sure where you can go to an ATM and not have a surcharge fee, go to moneypass.com, type in the zip code, and it will tell you what. ATMs are uh, on the MoneyPass network, so you can use it, won't get charged a fee. I like that feature a lot. Uh, we also offer offer Simply Free checking accounts and Simply Free business checking accounts. Uh, right now when you open up a new checking account, you'll get a free gift, which we are still giving you the option of two different gifts to choose from. we got a fleece blanket or a Bluetooth Christmas ornament speaker. Okay. So a couple more weeks on those, this is one of our longer cycles. All right. And then we'll start our gift cycle for 2022, which... I'm excited about. So. Hmm. And you're going to remember to bring them in to show everybody on Facebook. If you text me and remind me. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> I'll text you every Friday, even if it hasn't changed yet. Okay, that's fine. I'll let you. So. All right. We also offer commercial lending for businesses. Contact Lindy Breeden for more information. His direct number is 574-223-1716. We also offer uh, insurance services. You can get a quote today by calling 833-331-0020. Or you can go right to our website and click the link there. Yep. And if you're uh, wanting to plan your retirement, uh, maybe a 401k, IRA, things of that nature, contact Mark Blueball or Brian Bell of our financial services department for more information. They'll help you out with that. Yeah. You can like us on all the social media channels. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at FF Banking. Uh, give us a like on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So. Lots of places to go watch. Yes. We're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Bars must meet underwriting guidelines. We're FDIC insured and equal housing lender. And our NMLS number is 399927. And that makes us legal. That makes us legal and ready to speak with our guest this morning, which is Janet Shally, Executive Director of the Fulton County Animal Adoption and Education Center. That's always a mouthful to say, but uh, important to get the whole title in there. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we had John last year around January, yeah. and last year you talked about how 2020 you were prepared for 
kind of, I don't want to say the worst, but yeah. not as successful as the years ended up being. And you talked right. about the community support. How was 2021 in comparison to 2020? A little bit better. Yeah, I always, uh, 2019 I refer to as pre-COVID. Yeah. And 20, last year was, was odd. But um, this year, not quite the same as pre-COVID, but we're getting back to somewhat oh, of sir. normal. Good. Um, some good things, uh, better things happened in 2021. Um, that I'm excited about, but um, yeah, I added up all the numbers and I have in front of me the years 2013 to 2021. Wow, that's a lot so, of numbers. Um, I'm not going to read them all to you, <laughs> but if anybody's interested in seeing how the numbers change over the years, um, it's on our website. Okay. So it's, it's actually very interesting to see how, how it's changed over the years and how different circumstances have affected our numbers. Um, but overall, I would, I'm pretty happy with, with last year. And where is the, what is the website address if somebody wants to go it's there? FultonCOAnimalCenter.org. FultonCOAnimalCenter.org. Yeah. Do you remember that book? It's not quite as long as our title. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll try to remember that. It might be easier than your trivia question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. So, <laughs> so I know one thing last year that you really hit on was um, you had a close to, and I don't remember the exact... Um, statistical data, but it was a hundred percent, close to a hundred percent for uh, dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last did that year. Carry over? Well, twenty twenty, we did have a hundred percent. We did not have to use a single yes. dog. But of course, our intake for dogs was a lot lower too. Sure. Um, we were closed for part of the year, and then all that um, we're home. Um, but yeah, last year there was just one dog that we did have to end up euthanizing this year, uh, this past year due to behavior. So okay. um, liability is just not, sure. you can't place those types of dogs and you're going to come across them. Sure. Um, so it was 99.99% save rate. That's still very, very <laughs> good. Dogs. Yeah, and our cat save rate went up 0.5%. So last year's 96%. Um, sorry, I keep saying last year. Cause I, I'm saying the same thing. 2020 yeah. was 96%. Last year, 2021, was 96.5% save rate for cats. Going up, we'd like to hear so, that. So, yeah, actually, adoptions for 2021 is better than pre-COVID even. So, 2019, we had 450 cats adopted. Um, this past year, we had 468. Oh, great. Yeah. So, adoptions for cats are going really well. I think people spend more time at home and they want a little cuddle buddy with them. Um, so we still have lots of cats. This is our slower time of the year, but we mm -hmm. do still have some cats and dogs looking for home if anybody is interested. Um, overall intake, I'll just say the big numbers. Mm -hmm. um, for 2021 was 897 animals. The year before that in 2020, it was 781. And pre-COVID, it was 1,054. Wow. So we're somewhere in the middle. Yeah. We're, we're getting back um, to normal as far as intake, but I do still like to see the intake number overall decrease over time. Sure. Um, that means more people are equipped and have the resources to care for their animals. Mm -hmm. So we like to see that. That's our overall goal. Um, and then um, outcomes as far as uh, cats adopted, um, reclaimed by owner, dogs adopted, all that. We did 909 for 2021 compared to 807 for 2020. So, like so, hearing that. Yep. We're, we're keeping up. Everything that's coming in, we're, we're getting placed pretty, pretty much successfully. I saw on Facebook last night, or maybe it was yesterday, that uh, you have some barn cats. We do. Available for adoptions. Those are a little bit tougher to place. Um, sure. People have the idea that these cats are vicious, uh, when in retrospect, they're, they're just terrified. Yeah. They're terrified of people, and they just want to hide, mm -hmm. but they still deserve to live. So sure. their only placement option really is a barn home, because that's mm -hmm. the type of home that they came from, and that's where they're happiest. So mm -hmm. if we've tried to place those feral cats, adult feral cats, in a home, <laughs> the owner would not be happy, yeah. and those mm -hmm. cats would not be happy. So yeah. Um, yeah, barn homes are needed if anybody has a safe, and, um, warm, provide shelter, provide sure. food um, for these cats, we would be very grateful. That's one thing Paul and I were talking about at the start of the broadcast with the temperatures getting as cold as they are. If you have any animals outside and, and yes. can bring them inside, please, please think about yes, doing so. Yes, please. It, the wind chill is what gets them. Yeah. And um, even if you have a shelter, you know, all three sides, at least three sides need to be completely, you know, because the wind coming in, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it really makes them really cold. So. So, uh, can you talk about the adoption process a little bit? What goes yeah. into adopting a pet? Sure. Yeah. So, since COVID, we've kind of had to change things around, not only due to lower staffing, but mm -hmm. um, we feel it works better to have an appointment-based system. 
So what we ask people to do is submit an application on our website. You can see all of our available animals on our website, or you can always message us on Facebook too, and we're happy to tell you what we have or call. Um, so once you find an animal that you're potentially interested in, you just fill out an application on our website. Mm -hmm. It comes straight to us. We get it pretty quickly. We'll follow up with you pretty quickly, and you could potentially have an appointment the same day and adopt the same day. We wow. just need to do it in a process so we don't have 10 people there all at once um, potentially adopting the same cat and, or dog. So yeah, yeah. appointment-based, just fill out an application. We'll be in touch with you to schedule that. And you also have a foster to adopt program. Can you kind of explain what that entails? Yeah, we've had that since since I started um, and before that. Um, so basically, you can take an animal home for up to two weeks as a trial period. Um, it's no charge to do that. You don't pay the adoption fee until you decide to adopt. So you have up to that full two weeks okay. to make that decision. Um, we always encourage it, actually, for people who have other pets at home, sure. kids at home. Um, sometimes you just don't know, and the animal might act differently in a sheltered environment versus a home environment. Right. So we always encourage that. Right, especially if you, if your dog or cat might be older, yeah. If, yeah. And, and you're trying to adopt a younger For sure. dog or cat, you might want to make sure that those two get along before. Yes before you make the payment and then yes. find out they don't get along. We want it to be a good match for the animal you're adopting and Absolutely. the pets of your family. So. Absolutely. We're speaking with Janet Shally this morning. She is the Executive Director of the Fulton County Animal Adoption and Education Center. Um, what are the adoption fees? I know when we had you on last year in uh, 2021, you spoke that they, the fees didn't go up from mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah. Same, same, same thing? We are not increasing fees again. Um, that's not where we make get our funding. Right. Um, we want it to be affordable, affordable for people to adopt an animal. Mm -hmm. um, so we found it important that we did not increase our fees this year. So um, and we often have sales and promotions throughout the year too. So what our adoption fees are are not what they always are. Okay. Um, a lot of times we'll decrease them even more. Um, so for instance, for cats right now, it ranges between $30 to $60, depending on the age of the cat. Um, dogs, same thing, between 70 to 140 140 being those cute little puppies. puppies. Sure, sure. Yep. Oh, I think you need another, another dog. No, I have two. <laughs> Thank you. They uh, they already take up my entire bed. I don't I don't need any no more. Room. Yeah, no, no more, more room. room. Sorry. Um, and you guys have you guys have a board at, yeah. at the animal center? We have a board of directors. Board of directors. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, how many how many board members of, or how many directors I guess are on your board? I should say. Um, I think we are at nine now. Nine. We just added two more. Okay. Yes. So we were at seven for a little bit, um, kind of regrouping and, and reorganizing, and we just added two more. And how often do does the board meet? Every other month. Every other month. Yeah. So six times a year. Mm -hmm. And if somebody was interested in the future potentially trying to get on the board, mm -hmm. is there a process or? Yeah, probably. I attend the board meetings, okay. but I'm not on the board because gotcha. I'm the director. Um, you would probably contact our president, who is Jody Wynn. Okay. And she works at the bank. Yes, she does. <laughs> yeah, she was just on here uh, last week. Yes, she was. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you could use some volunteers. Definitely. Yep. Always use volunteers. We have a volunteer calendar in our break room where people can just sign up for shifts. Um, there's no time commitment. We don't expect you to come in three times a week. Um, if you want to come once a month, we're okay mm -hmm. with that. You just sign up on the calendar so we know when to expect you. Um, dog walking, I know it's pretty chilly right now, but um, eventually when the spring comes, dog walking, um, helping with cleaning cat cages in the morning, caring for the animals, um, transporting. We have adoption cages up in Warsaw Pet Smart, okay. which has been very, very successful. That's, it's very important to us to keep those cages full. So sure. transporting is sometimes time consuming for staff. So if we can have volunteers doing it, that's very helpful. And I'm, I'm assuming if they're high school students, they have to be 16 without to Correct. go yes. without a parent once they turn 16 they can volunteer without a parent okay. they just need to have um, a waiver signed by their parent okay. until they're 18. okay and um supplies do you are you in need of any supplies at all we just got a bunch of bleach from the jail we posted oh, great. on facebook we were pretty excited about that because we're always buying bleach but yeah. this might last us the entire year oh, that's so good. we don't need any bleach that's good but um uh, things that you can donate from your home, uh, any type of cleaning supplies, uh, fabuloso, uh, paper towels, uh, used sheets and linens and towels. We use towels for the bottoms of the cat cages, so we go through those a lot. Um, we have a complete wish list at the Animal Center, and we have it on our website, too. 
um, chew bones for dogs, basically anything pet or cleaning related we can put to use. Can you, sir? Do you have any uh, upcoming events in 2022 or any, any new items to speak of? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, one, one new thing that we started in 2021 that I am really excited about is our low-cost vaccine clinic. So that we just started that in May of 2021, which is kind of a weird time to start it with all the, with all the COVID and we're, you know, can, do people need this service? But we found that they, they, they do. Um, it's affordable. It's accessible. Um, we do it about twice a month. Um, and it's a nonprofit clinic, so we don't, any money we make goes back to the animal center. So um, for our clinic, we did profit $7,800, but that all went back to the vaccine clinic or back to the shelter. So um, it helps us, it helps the animals in our community. We offer basic wellness, so we can't see any sick or injured animals, um, but we do preventative care like vaccines, uh, flea and tick preventative, heartworm testing, Lyme testing, field leukemia, HIV testing, all those things. So we have... Um, Dr. Collins is the veterinarian in Bourbon. She comes and helps, and we just hired a new another vet to kind of split the shift with her. She's Dr. Sam from Indianapolis. Oh, so great. she's wow. helping us out. Um, so that's going to continue in 2022. Um, you can book online um, right off our website. It's very easy. You can see all of our prices, all of our products and services. Book online. Uh, we have one coming up this Sunday. We still have some openings for this Sunday. Um, overall, we saw 367 animals last year. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good number yeah. for the first yeah, time absolutely. doing it. It averaged out about 45 animals a month. So wow. we're making a difference. I'd like to see animals getting vaccinated. Sure. That means less disease in our community, less parvo. Sure. That's a scary one. And flea and ticks. People don't realize how many diseases fleas and ticks carry for their pets. Right. right. So exciting stuff. Um, is there going to be a spay and neuter clinic? Yeah, I'm working on funding to help get the, the cost down. We always gotcha. have our low-cost spinning or transport, um, which is with Lafayette. Um, they're coming once a month for 2022 for now. Um, they're trying to hire another vet to get that happening more often. And then Kokomo may be starting a transport, too. So, um, And then Public Vet, which used to be Neuter Scooter, they'll be here on January 17th. Um, you have to sign up on their website. It's oh. pub.vet, pub.vet. Oh. So I think there's like maybe 10 or 15 more spots for cats. That's cats only. Um, but trying to raise and get some more grant money to keep that funding down um, for, for people who pay out of pocket. If they've got 10 cats and it's 40, 40 bucks, that's $400. Yeah, so that's, that's... We're trying to get some grant funding to help with that because sure. I know it gets overwhelming quickly. And people, yeah, people, we want people to be able to keep their cats and keep them from reproducing. Absolutely. Um, port of pet. Is there any plan for the pets? We have year? one in October mm -hmm. for the chili cook-off. Yeah. Typically just do that one just, just once that one. a year. So look out for October of 2022. Well, it was nice that you guys were able to have it last year. Because mm -hmm. I know in 2020 you weren't able to because there was no chili yes. cook-off. So yeah. there's no, no yeah. port pets. Yeah. Year. We were right here on Main Street. And yep. it, was, it was fun. It was a good location because before we did it in your parking lot right. at the bank. Right. But uh, we liked kind of being in the event. So sure. that was fun. So yeah. I, I look forward to that this year. Yeah. Now, the only other fundraiser we have coming up is not till, uh, April 30th. April so, 30th? Yeah. Okay. Um, that'll be our craft show. We've done this probably five or six years. It's at the Historical Museum. And we invite vendors to sell their items. And we um, make a... It's a fundraiser for us because we get the vendor fee for the crafters. Okay. And the entrance fee is usually a dollar to get in. Okay. So look out for that April 30th at the Fulton County Museum. And one event I know you guys had at the end of 2021 was a silent auction. Yes. Can you speak on that a little bit? Because it looked there was neat seeing everything on Facebook. Yeah. That was up for, up for auction. Last year we actually did it twice. We did okay. it in February um, for like a Valentine's Day theme one, and then we did it again in the holidays around November, I think it mm -hmm. was. And both of them were very successful. Yeah. Um, lots of donations from the community and our business and the local businesses. We are so thankful for that. Um, I want to say we raised over two thousand dollars for both. Oh, that's great. Uh, for each, so four thousand over four thousand dollars total. That's great. So it is an easy fundraiser for us. Um, if people like it because they can do it from home, yeah. they can just come pick up their items. So, yeah, we like doing this. That in the plans for this year again? Yeah. I'd probably be at the holiday. We don't want to do it too yeah. soon. And, um, we appreciate the local businesses. We don't want to ask too much. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, anything else you want to uh, talk about or plug this morning? Oh, uh, gosh. No. I mean, if anybody's looking to adopt an animal, we still have plenty. Mm -hmm. um, 
and just look on our website, see the avail available animals, put in an application, and we'll be in touch. And I think last year you talked, when we had you on, you talked about if you're looking for a specific breed of dog, for instance, uh, was it petfinder.com? Yeah. Yep, you got is, it. Mm -hmm. Is the good website to go That's to. And all all rescues and shelters use as a database to upload their available pets, and you can search by radius of how far you're willing to travel. Um, you can search by breed, by size, all those, all those things. Great. Great. Well, thank you for joining us this thank morning. You. Appreciate Thanks it. Thank you for having me. Now we'll see if she can get the trivia right. Yeah, we'll let her go I first. I think that's a question. Ooh. Should be. According to dailypaws.com, what is the most popular cat breed in the world? Persian, American short hair, British short hair, or ragdoll? As far as popular, what people have or what people want? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I should have looked this up. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what they went off of on this website. So. My guess is ragdoll is what people, it's popular because those are beautiful. And we do have people calling asking, do you have any ragdolls? We don't get them in very often. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with her. <laughs> Smart choice. It is, it is ragdolls. Yeah. So. <laughs> but both I right. would say the overall most common breed would be just the domestic short hair. Yes. Yeah, also yes. great cats. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I, I, I got to be honest, I wasn't too familiar with my cat breeds either, but looking at the pictures of all these, I've seen mm -hmm. all yeah. the four of these cats before. Oh, so, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you should look up Maine Coons. They're beautiful cats. They're so I, direct also. They, yeah, they're, they're on there too on the list. But okay, yeah. Got some words of wisdom this morning from Betty White, who was, oh, who was an American actress who uh, sadly passed away last week, I at know. age 99, just before she turned 100. 2021 had one more blow. Yeah, for she uh, she was definitely a celebrity. That the older she got, it didn't seem like she aged. No, she, she did. She just. A great person and, and a wonderful yeah. actress. Well, a little long quote this morning, but I think it's a good one. It's your outlook on life that counts. If you take yourself lightly and don't take yourself too seriously, pretty soon you can find the humor in our everyday lives. And sometimes it can be a lifesaver. Those are great words. That's our secret to living. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tanner. Uh, we'll see you thank again you, Paul. next week. And thank you, Janet, for all the information. Thank you.